Today we're going to go through a, a bit of an introduction on Autodesk Fusion 360. So as soon as you install the program, it's going to ask you to sign in. So I'm going to take care of that real quick. So after you click sign in, it'll go ahead and load up Autodesk Fusion. So you can see it takes you to your basic screen here. And this is where you're going to do the majority of your work. So for our first lesson, we're just going to do some some basic CAD modeling. You have a blank screen, so you can't really do anything with that. So we're going to go up here to where we have Create Sketch, so the green little plus mark. So we'll click that, and now you'll notice you get three different work planes. To make that make sense, think of a work plane as a piece of paper. Before we put those, before we click Sketch and got these work planes, we had nowhere to draw at all. So really what we're going to do here is we're going to pick a work plane or we're going to just pick a piece of paper. You can look at them that way too. I always choose this one because it's in the XY plane. We can make that make more sense later, but we'll go ahead and click that. So now I can draw away. Over here on our sketch palette, this should show up, but eventually we'll, we'll want to get rid of that. We don't really need it in our way. But you can kind of see how mine is set. Sketch Grid and Snap are set. All of these have the check marks by them. When I, if I don't want that to be in the screen, like I need more space, I can just hit these two little arrows here. So now I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to choose this rectangle. And I'm going to click, and I'm going to come down here. And I like to start right here. If we think about the X and Y system of graphing, right there, that is point zero zero so it's zero on the x zero on the y so i click there and i let go of my mouse and i move my mouse and that allows me to draw a rectangle now we can make that a certain size but for right now i'm just gonna make it even on both sides it really doesn't matter your numbers as long as it stays on the screen then i'll click so notice now i have a square a two-dimensional square next up one of the great advantages of CAD these days is that we can go straight to 3D models. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to say finish the sketch. I'm going to click the green check mark here. And that now allows me to go into 3D mode. So you can see up here at the top, things have changed a little bit. Right here, this is extrude. And extrude means that we're going to make it three dimensional. So I'm going to click that and then I come down here and I, I click on the square. And I can actually drag this arrow, or you see right here in this box, I could type in a number. If I want that to be a cube, I just need to pick the same number that I use for my square. After that, I can either click OK, or I can press Enter on my keyboard. And now you see I have a, a cube. Some of the things we have to work with with CAD are just simply how to move around. So I'm going to show you a little bit about that. Down here is the orbit button. This is also known as rotate. And so I click that in and I come up here and click inside that circle, hold my mouse button down and I can move that shape around. If I wanted to go back up to the view cube, I could click front view right here and it would take me back to where I started. I could also click the home button and that would take me to what's called an isometric view of things. So it kind of puts it at that 3D angle. I can also click on the corners or the edges of that view cube and it'll rotate it around for me. Likewise, I can click and hold that thing down, just like I did down here with the orbit button. If I want to square up a side, I would click this look at tool. It kind of looks like a book opening. And then I could click whatever side I'm going to draw on next and it'll square it up that way. I can use the pan tool, which is the hand, and that allows me to move things on the screen like this. If I wanted to zoom in on an area, I could do it right there. If I wanted to just fit it to my screen, I can hit the magnifying glass here and it just kind of brings that all into focus for me. Those are the big ones I use most of the time, those four. Actually, excuse me, one, two, three. I don't use this one too often. I do use this one quite a bit. So now I can use the wheel on my mouse and I can zoom in and out. I'm going to go ahead and put this in the home view. And now I'm going to draw 
a circle on this and I'm going to cut it through. So before I draw again, I need to pick a work plane. Remember, this is how we started this thing. So what that means is I need to pick which side of this cube I want to draw on. Now remember, there's three more sides, right? Because a cube has six sides. So I'm going to click New for Sketch. And I'm just going to pick any side. I'll pick this one for now. And notice that the grid has popped up everywhere. That tells me I'm in sketch mode. Now, instead of picking the rectangle like I did before, I'm going to click the circle. So I'll do that. And I'm just going to kind of eyeball it for now. We'll get into dimensioning at another time. And I'm just going to put it right in the middle. And I'll keep it at one inch. All I did to make the one inch is I just typed in a one. And then I pressed enter. Then I'll hit finish sketch. Then I'll go to extrude. And I'm going to go over here under the extrude menu. And where it says new body, I'm going to click cut. And I'll click on the circle because that's the part I want to cut. And then I can just drag the arrow. If I know the exact dimension, I could type it in here. Elsewise, I could kind of feel it out. So I hit OK. And then I'll go back. I prefer this orbit tool. And now I have a square with a circle through it. Next up, I'm going to go back into sketch mode. And I'm going to pick a different side. Just any side that the circle's not going through. So I'll pick this side for now. And I'm going to use the rectangle tool again. And I'm just going to draw a rectangle in there. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to extrude it. Now this time, instead of clicking Finish Sketch on my keyboard, I'm going to press the E key. And that is a shortcut to get me to extrude. And the operation, again, I'm going to choose Cut. I'll choose the square. And then I'm going to just back the square. Once I get it to where I want it, I'll click OK. Then you can rotate it around. And then you can see I have a square with a square cut through it and a circle cut through. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to choose New Sketch again. And I'm going to choose this last side. This time, I'm going to take the line tool, which is right here. And I'm just going to draw. I'll just do a triangle. Keep it simple. It's very important that I close the shape off. Let's say I went too far over like I did here. I can go up here to the scissors tool. This is called trim. And I click that, and then I'll come down here, and I'll get that little extra out of there. So now I can zoom out, or I'll do the fit. And I can either hit Finish Sketch and Extrude, or I could have pressed the E key. I like to have mine rotated a little bit when I extrude things. This helps me see better. So I'm in Extrude. I click the triangle and click cut. And I'm just going to cut it through and hit OK. So now when I rotate that around, you can see what I've got. Let me zoom out a little bit so you can see the whole thing. From here, let's say I'm finished with that file. So I'm going to go click the disk for save. I'm going to give it a name. And for a folder, I'll click the down arrow. And I'm going to say new project. I'll start a project for this. And I'll just call this test parts. So it'll create that. And then I'll select that folder. And then, then I'll hit save. And then from then on, I can go to that folder and open it up anytime. I can go do that by going up to the waffle. We call it the waffle, but it's really the data panel. And I can go through here to my different folders by hitting the home. And it takes me through all the different folders I have. 
I just double click them and I can open them. If I choose the wrong folder, I can go back to home, go to the correct folder, and there's that test cube. And I just double click it and it'll open up. When I'm done with that, I can just hit the X. And it kind of closes that and makes the screen a little bigger. Something pretty neat about Fusion is that I can actually go up here. I can rewind this. This shows me everything I've done to this part. And then I'll hit the play button. And you can see how, how I put it together. So that's kind of a unique feature to Fusion. Kind of gives you a built-in animation of how things were done. That's our first lesson.